year for old Aaron's sons and daughters marching up Fifth Avenue in New York in one of the most elegant St. Patrick's Day parades in history. And divil a bit do they mind the breeze, which is blowing a gale now and then. And look at the Colleen, paying tribute to the good saints. And the kiddies, too. Just look at them stepping out. 40,000 men, women, and children parading to heavenly music, music right from the old side by a flock of bands. The parade is reviewed by many notables. There's Marilyn Guardia and Al Smith. Many times he's marched in it. And Jimmy Walker, just like in the old days. A parade three hours long. A celebration tonight. Santa Inez, arriving in New York from Panama, brings Dr. Jossie Condon back from his two-month vacation in Central America. And with his arrival, interest in the fate of Bruno Richard Hauptmann rises again to fever heat. Whether Jossie knows more about the case than has been told is still a mystery, a mystery Governor Hoffman of New Jersey would like to clear up. There have been angry words over the matter, but come up to the Bronx and see me sometime is Jossie's message for the governor. fragment of the flaming meteor that flared over New York and other parts of the eastern seaboard the other night was found embedded in the earth near Malaga, New Jersey, by the small son of Dr. Jinsha P. Gadiali, Hindu philosopher. The fragment is large enough to have wrecked the Gadiali home, had it buried a few feet from its course, a strange visitor from another world. Boys who throw spitballs shouldn't go to school in glass classrooms like those in this remarkable new school building at Hibbing, Minnesota. Great stretches of window space are filled with hollow glass bricks, giving three times the glass area of ordinary school room. The building accommodates 120 children in grades from the first to the fourth in the four classrooms into which it is divided. Individual heat control and automatic electric control of light intensity provide perfect conditions for study. The building itself cost $33,000. Yes, it's a far cry from the Little Red Schoolhouse. <laughs> Troops stationed in northern Italy are undergoing realistic training in gas warfare these days. They slip in just enough knockout gas to let them get a taste of real battle conditions, too. And even the youngsters are being trained to play an important role behind the lines. The Special Corps of Fascist Boys has been organized as a first aid unit for gas casualties. It's a great lark for the youngsters to don gas masks and take part in grown-up battle maneuvers, but it's a serious business, too. Modern war knows no safety zone, and boys such as these may well expect to do a man's job in case of another world war. Bangor, Maine has felt the crush of spring thaws, too. Ice jams in the Penobscot and the Kenduskate rivers have threatened numerous towns with floods. Just in time, the icebreaker, Kickapoo, arrived to smash the 20-inch pack, preventing what might have been a serious disaster. The relentless crush of the ice nearly sent Bangor Dam out. Power and communication lines have been seriously disrupted, cutting off some towns. This has been one of the country's most disastrous springs. Meet the man with the iron head, and next to him, a new type of shatterproof glass that's flexible. With that all-star cast, they're putting on a show in New York to show you how good it is. What a way to earn a living. Whoops! It's not the first performer. Ain't science wonderful? The rush.
Russian air travel has caused the airlines to send out a call for hostesses. Here are applicants flying over the Golden Gate prior to taking physical examinations. Many are called, but few are chosen in this profession. They not only serve meals, these girls must be registered nurses. Under 24 and up to rigid physical requirements. Take this whirling test. From this, United Airlines doctors can tell what conditions the girls can stand in the air. The pedigree of each girl is carefully noted. When the tests are finished, her batting average is figured out to the decimal point. There are 200 girls flying this one line alone, and the loss through marriage of these Dianas of the Airways is a serious one. Well, I guess you can't blame a poor passenger for falling. These girls will fly nearly 16,000 miles each month, 100 hours apiece in the air. Mm. One ticket for Georgia, and where's the nearest airport? training season for trotting horses as well as for ball players. Here at Seminole Park, Florida, they're being whipped into shape for the harness season with an eye on the Hamiltonian, the richest stake in the sport held at Goshen, New York. It's a difficult job, this training of trotters, teaching the horse that graceful gait, but it's a beautiful sight to watch. There are 1,200 harness meets each year, making it a sport more popular than the uninitiated would believe. Racing isn't confined to men, either. Many a woman handling her sulky right in there with the best of them. Trotting racing is truly an American sport. Developed in this country, it has reached a point of perfection that has not been attained elsewhere. It's America's version of the sport of kings. Frolic, ladies and gentlemen, is billed as a wrestling bout. Wee Willie Davis is swapping turns with Vincent Lopez, West Coast champ, at being very, very unkind. Out here at Seattle, Washington, the fans don't care for toe holes and hammer locks or the rest of that uh, effeminate stuff that passes for wrestling in the East. Arm twisting lacks the precision of a good poke in the jaw, and only a broken ankle is excused for failing to give the opponent the boot. Running spikes or brass knuckles might help, or a couple of healthy swings with a baseball bat. But Vincent's faced the music long enough now. Wee Willie comes in on the downbeat, and there's nothing left but to pay the piper and listen to the cheers. <laughs> 